What's up everybody, welcome to Mixed Marvel Arts, your go-to channel for all things MMA and comic books. Today we're getting back into the Spider's Shadow miniseries with a review of issue number 2. This series was extended to be a 5 issue story which is awesome because issue 1 was great. We saw Peter's bond to the symbiote getting stronger throughout the issue, with Spider-Man's actions becoming increasingly violent. He even refused to take the suit off after Mr. Fantastic told him to. And at the end, the Hobgoblin killed Aunt May, only to be murdered by Spider-Man immediately after. So let's dive into issue number two. It opens up with Peter giving into the symbiote's power and further progressing the bonding process with the suit. Then we get Peter Parker walking through the street with his all-black outfit, in deep thought about his murder of the Hobgoblin. Turns out Peter doesn't even feel that bad about it. He just doesn't want Mary Jane and his other close friends to find out what he did. But the symbiote convinces him that everything will be fine so long as Peter continues striking fear into his enemies. And at that moment, the Kingpin is learning about Spider-Man's new violent tactics. He's nervous that he might be Spider-Man's next target. But J. Jonah Jameson is one person who's actually glad to see Spider-Man turn bad. It confirms everything he's ever put into his Daily Bugle articles. That is, until Spider-Man breaks through Jameson's window and attacks him. We see more of his fear tactics and another evolution of his suit. It's a pretty cool design with a nice variation from the regular Venom look. It's quite symbolic that Peter Parker looks like Venom now because in this What If storyline, he is essentially Venom already. Because Spider-Man has become a complete criminal. And as you can see, he even admits it after breaking J. Jonah Jameson's hand. While this is all going down, the Fantastic Four are searching for Spider-Man to get the symbiote off him before the two permanently bond. It's nice to see the Human, the human Torch's concern for Spider-Man, because the two have become good friends by this point. But turns out Peter is just back at his apartment, and he's sleeping in a very strange way. The symbiote is just taking full control over everything. Mary Jane is completely confused by this strange sight, and very nervous about the news reports that Spider-Man has become a murderer. And Peter admits it's true, that he's completely guilty over what happened with the Hobgoblin, but only for the fact that Aunt May died in the process. He doesn't regret killing the Hobgoblin at all, or at least the symbiote doesn't. Peter is still having some conscious thoughts, but it's becoming less and less frequent at this point. So he heads back out to swing around and gets shot at by the Shocker. And the Scorpion is out to get Spider-Man too. But Spider-Man kills the Scorpion with ease, with some help from his new suit, then goes after the Shocker. Turns out they were sent by the Kingpin to kill Spider-Man, but Spidey has become too powerful and evil already. It's actually very reminiscent of this classic scene from the 90s cartoon, where Spider-Man goes out of control from the symbiote and goes after the Shocker in a similar way. I am invincible! Get back here, Shocker! Shocker! It's a pretty great scene from the cartoon, but it is actually quite similar to the comic we're reviewing right now. But then we see the Kingpin get approached by Spider-Man and he just drops the Shocker's arm on the ground. So his total kill count is already at three. And after the Kingpin reveals that he's discovered Spider-Man's true identity as Peter Parker, Spider-Man just kills him too. Spider-Man's enemies are all becoming increasingly nervous, as we see a meeting being held by Dr. Octopus and other Spider-Man enemies to form a plan of action. But none of them have encountered this new Spider-Man, so they actually invited none other than J. Jonah Jameson to the meeting. He tells them that Spider-Man must be stopped. It's a great plot twist. Yet things get even crazier when the meeting ends. Dr. Octopus tells his men that after Spider-Man is taken care of, he wants the rest of the Sinister Six killed also. Doc Ock doesn't trust any of them. But ironically, his own men are the ones he shouldn't trust because he's stabbed by one of them who reveals himself to be Eddie Brock. Turns out Eddie wants to be the man to kill Spider-Man, but why? We'll have to wait for the next issue to find out, but man that was a good reveal. Eddie Brock is the wild card in this story, 
because of course he becomes Venom in the regular Marvel Universe. But in this What If story, Peter Parker is taking the role of Venom. I can't wait to see what Eddie Brock's plans are. This series just keeps on delivering and I'm really enjoying it. The art is pretty good and watching Peter's progression to becoming Venom is really exciting. So I'm going to rate this issue a 9 out of 10. The series is off to a great start and I can't wait to see what happens next. What did you guys think of the issue? Let me know in the comments section why you think Eddie Brock wants to kill Spider-Man. Do you think he is aware of the symbiote in some way? I want to hear your predictions, or any other thoughts you have on the comic. But if you want to hear from me more often, then follow the link to my Twitter in the video description below and follow me on there. And as always, if you want to see more comic reviews, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you in my next video.